Hello, everyone. I'm Colleen Vanderzyden, and this is Creating an Inspired Life. I'm so happy you're watching and listening as usual. My passion, as you know, is to help you create your best, your most unique, your most awesome life. And I love to do this every day. Everything I do is towards helping people become their best selves so they can have the best life they possibly can. I'm a medium as well as a life coach. And on this show, I like to do a coaching tip. And today, Today, I'm getting right to it. Today's coaching tip is all about a strategy you can use to help you make choices. This comes from a blog I read the other day from Kelly Nataris. She's actually the head of a company called KN Literary, and it's a company that helps writers get their books edited, get book proposals done, things like this. Now, she has this blog, and it's not all about writing things. It's actually about strategies, techniques, ideas, that you can use to live your best life. As you can understand, knowing me, you know how much I love that stuff. And so I'm really enjoying her blog. And she talked the other day about this rule she uses in her life and what it is. She does it when she needs to make choices about things. She only does activities or commitments that are a nine out of 10 or a 10 out of 10 in her scale of importance. Let's just think about that. The only things that she will choose to do are things that are a nine or a 10 in her rating. Is your first thought resistance? Because I know so many times when we talk about things like this, people go, oh, I can't do that. There's no way I could do that. I have this to do, I have that to do. She doesn't know what we're talking about. She doesn't know this or that. And I know this idea can cause resistance, especially if we're not aware yet that we have control over our lives. We think we don't have control, but we really do have control. And this is a great strategy to kind of regain that control. She's not saying to not go to work if you don't feel like it, okay? But what she's saying is you always have a choice. So many times we believe we don't have a choice. We get stuck in the I have to's or I should's. Um, we get stuck in the yes, I'll do that when we really don't want to. We sometimes do things to please other people rather than what's good for ourselves. It's kind of like what she's talking about here. But if we choose our actions based on what's important to us, a nine or a 10, we're taking control of our lives. It's very simple, really, but it can be hard to grasp for some people because there's, uh, well, a natural resistance to this. Now, for some examples, I'll have a few examples here that you'll enjoy. I don't like conflict. I don't like challenging conversations with other people. I don't like having to speak my truth if it's going to make someone uncomfortable. So for me, that action is probably a one or a zero out of 10. It is something I just really want to avoid. But I recognize how important it is for me to speak my truth. I didn't always do that in my lifetime. So it's become something I'm really aware of and I'm really looking at with myself. So it has become a 10 out of 10 for me to recognize the times I need to speak my truth, no matter what or how uncomfortable I'm going to be. I don't always achieve this, but I strive to do it and it is important to me. So in making that choice, I'm not going to make the choice to uh, not talk because it's a one or a zero out of 10 for me, but I'm going to look at the end result as well. And the end result for me is it's important for me to reclaim my power by speaking my truth. So I will do my best to do that. Do you see the fine point here? It's not all about the immediate action, but we also have to take into consideration our the ramifications and the consequences of our actions. So if you hate your job, say you really hate your job, it's a one or a two out of 10. Um, and you really would just rather not go. But if you don't have an alternative and you need a job, you need income, you decide not to go one day or two days or whatever, you could lose your job. Now that, I can't imagine that somebody would have that as their goal. Uh, you know, it's nine out of 10 for me to lose my job today. You know, people aren't going to do that. They're not going to say that. So you have to look at the bigger picture. Let's use another example that will be really exciting. Say you have a baby with a very messy diaper, okay? And I'm sure many of you have experienced that. Changing a messy diaper, what is that, a one, a two? <laughs> That's not going to be big. 
However, the end result of the messy diaper is you're going to have a cleaner baby, a happier baby, and you might be happier as well if the smell was significant. So changing the diaper becomes a 10 out of 10. So you're still going to act on that. Frequently, we don't believe or even realize we don't know or think we have control or don't have control. We don't understand. We think we don't have control and we don't even know we believe we don't have control. But this nine out of 10 or higher technique is a great technique because it helps you make your choices. It helps clarify your thoughts, clarify your boundaries, what's acceptable to you, what kind of life do you want to have so you can say no. Okay, you don't have to say yes. You can just kind of go, hmm. So the next time somebody asks you to do something and you say to yourself, oh, I really don't want to do that. And you start to say yes, stop yourself. <laughs> Take a second. Stop yourself. Check in with yourself. Is it a nine out of 10 or higher? If it's not, say no. And if you can't come right out and say no because you're uncomfortable with it, do what I do, which is to say, I have to check my calendar. I don't know what's in there, which is true. I usually don't know what's in there. So I do have to check it. So I will go home and check it. But it also buys me a day or two of time to really think, do I want to volunteer for this forced volunteer work? Do I want to do this or not? So you can do that as well. So you have time to really think. The other thing that sometimes happens is we force ourselves to do things. We feel we have to do something when we really don't. Um, for example, I don't like paying my bills. Does anybody? I don't know. I don't like paying my bills. That's not a really big nine out of 10 for me, let me tell you. But if I don't pay them, there's going to be a big problem. And so when I pay my bills, because the end result is I want my bills paid so there's not problems. So when I'm doing the bills, I try to think of ways that could reward myself. Maybe I'll do something fun afterwards, or maybe I'll have some good music. I've even taken my bills outside to pay, play, pay them, play with them, yeah. Pay them when I can be outside in the sun and all of that. So if you feel you have to or should do something and it's a negative thing and you start resisting, just check in with yourself. Find out, is this a nine out of 10 or a 10 out of 10 for you? Don't forget to look at the end result. You've got to look at that as well. You can't sit around all day long watching TV. Well, you can, but why? But you could sit around all day watching TV, eating junk food, and just getting fatter and fatter as you sit on the couch. But if your goal is is to be gigantic and out of shape and unhealthy, then that's okay, You've, you're achieving your goal. But if it's not that, then you have to look at the end result, the long term too. So you want to, you'll also notice sometimes, like for the example of paying my bills, even though it's not a uh, something I love to do, it is necessary, but because I'm making the choice to do it and making it as best I can, as great as experience as I can, it makes the negative feelings go away. I don't sit there dreading and go, oh, I have to pay my bills. I don't do that. So this can help you clarify in your head. You have choices in everything you do. Use Kelly's technique, try it out, play with it. You can use it for all sorts of things, not just for activities and commitments. I bet you can think of some other things you could use it for too. Anytime you have to make a choice. When you get that feeling inside that just kind of says to you, mm, no, you probably shouldn't do that. And then you start to speak check back in with yourself, figure out where you want to go, figure out what you want to do. It's going to make a huge difference in your life. I have something similar I do, but I really liked her idea. So I did want to share that with you. It's a great idea and it's so simple. So try it out and you'll be surprised at how well it helps you create your best, most unique, awesome life. It's amazing. I'm telling you. So you can connect with me on Facebook, Colleen Vander Zyden, medium and self-empowerment coach. And I wish you would connect with me there and follow my page. I'm getting ready to hand in my book proposal. Yay. And the publisher is looking at my follower numbers, you know, something we don't think about that is important, but apparently to a publisher it is. And also you can find me on my website, psychicmediumcolleen.com. And I would love for you to sign up for my mailing list there. And you can also just connect with me, ask questions, you know, say hi, whatever. Tell me what you think of the show. That'd be great. So we are going to move on to our first caller, who is Stella from Georgia. Stella, how are you today? Hi, I'm, I'm good. You? I'm doing very well. Thank you. You sound awesome, by the way. You sound very happy. Oh, how are thank, you doing? Thank you. <laughs> oh, good. So how can I help you today? 
Yes, uh, I want to know about my love life and um, about, you know, health and uh, money, you know. <laughs> Pretty much everything Where's that comes in, right? Where's my love life going to go? Okay. So um, what I'm feeling right away is, and I like to check in with a spirit on the other side before I get going, because uh, it kind of just gives me a little bit more information as we get going. And I do have a woman here who passes, um, and I'm feeling she passes on the earlier side, but not that early. So I'm talking like midlife kind of thing, 60, 70, that kind of thing. She's giving me the impression she had a serious illness before she passes, and she's also giving me the impression she is a relative of yours. Do you have a grandmother or somebody who would have passed on the more early side, you know, 60, 70, um, with, with some kind of serious illness? Oh, I no, I don't have a, I don't have a, you know, family that passed away recently. I don't know who. Okay, and it doesn't have to be recent. So just just keep this in mind because you may be able to figure this out later. Um, because when she comes in, she's definitely giving me the impression she passes in the middle age, but on the older side of the middle age, so 60s, 70s. Um, she gives me the impression she's quite close to you. And if she's not close to you uh, physically, that you may not have met her, met her. It could have been from a while ago where you might not just recall her right now. Um, but anyway, and she's also saying she passes of this illness. So just keep that in mind. I have to say I like her energy when she comes in because it's actually very similar to your energy she's telling me she's telling me that you are actually quite the sweetie okay she tells me that you're somebody who really cares about people and that you're there mm -hmm. for them she says you have a little bit of a problem though speaking your truth do you not say what you feel all the time okay right um yeah that's right i mean you know i mean i have a lot of family that passed away too i mean like my dad passed away, and um, my ex-husband passed away, you know? Okay. Okay. So just remember what I've said about her, and we'll just figure that out another time. Um, but she's talking about you now, and she's talking about how you are to make sure that you're speaking your truth, saying what you need to say to create the life you want, which is my theme tonight and in a very strong way. And what we want to do, and as she's talking about this, she's talking about a relationship for you, and she's told me you had one somewhat recently, and that just didn't work out well. Did you have a really, really oh my God, I can't talk today, relationship somewhat recently? that didn't work out last year or so? Yes. Okay. She's talking about it not working out. And she's also saying that's okay because it wasn't the right person anyway. Okay. When she talks about this, she tells me that you're, you're very nice, actually very nice. And I use that in the highest regard. Okay. It's not just a generic, you're a nice person. You are a nice person. You really try to be there for other people. You really try to help them. And she's telling me yeah. that in the, re the relationship that is coming, okay, she's telling me there's a relationship that is coming. And I want to say August. And whenever I get a, a month or something like this, uh, that doesn't mean wait until August. Or, and it also doesn't mean look at every single person you meet and go, is it you? Is it you? Don't do that. Uh, but just keep in yeah. mind that August is a pivotal month. There are going to be some shifts happening for you in August. She does so show oh, a person coming good. in. I can't wait. Yes, <laughs> yes so it is much. good. Now, everything you do between now and August is important to set the groundwork for this shift. So you have to make sure you're doing everything you need to do to be strong in who you are, that you know yourself yeah. so well that you're not going to get lost because of somebody else. You know what I'm saying there? Yes, yes. Okay, because sometimes people, you know, they meet somebody new and they kind of forget about themselves. They don't do the things they always used to do, the things they like to do. They don't hang out with their friends like they used to. And she's telling me to make sure you um, continue with yourself, that you know who you are, what you want. Be very clear in what kind of person you're looking for so that when that yeah. person comes in and you meet them, you go, okay, this is right. That way you won't waste your time. So August is very important. The finances, I'm feeling you're doing okay. She says it's okay. You don't worry about it so much. She says just let it yeah. kind of evolve on its own. It's going to work out not to worry about it. Okay. Do you have, before I let you go though, did you have an unexpected expense in the last little bit here? Yes. Yeah. Um, about health and money. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, um, I, she's, I just wanted to know my about my kids' health and my health, you know, how it's going to be. 
Yes. Um, she's not mentioning too much about the health as of this second. Um, she's talking about the, the money, though, because she's telling me you had an unexpected expense that um, yeah. kind of got you a little bit concerned about the money. And she says not to yeah. worry about it, that the money always comes back. You know, it'll always work. Health-wise, I have to say right now I am feeling something for the health, and I'm not sure who it goes to, if it's to you, your kids, or her at this point. But I am feeling stuff happening in my um, lower back. Are you having any back issues by any chance? Yes. Okay, because I'm feeling some stuff in the lower back. I'm also feeling, um, you know, even up in, into the kidney area, it's really kind of achy back there. Um, and when I'm getting that, and I'm not a doctor, so I can't diagnose nor prescribe those things, you know, but I'm getting the feeling that I want you to be drinking a lot of water. Do you drink a lot of oh, water? Okay. Yeah. Okay. This is this seems to be important to kind of flush things out, okay, um, to kind of get things moving through your body. And it, I think that actually feels better to me. So you do with that what you want to do with that. If you're not drinking enough water, oh, that's okay. Great. So <laughs> feel free so to much. start. Yes. So thank you so much, Stella, for calling. It was really nice talking to you. You have a really good night. You too. It was really nice talking to you too. Thank you. You're welcome. And that was Stella from Georgia. It's always fun when we get the spirits in because that woman, that spirit came in so very strong. And even though Stella doesn't recognize her right now, I bet you she'll recognize her later because that's what usually happens. I know I've told you probably in the past that every time I went to a reading, I didn't know all my dead people. I had to call my mom and then she said, well, that's your grandmother. And I go, really? I had no idea. So you never know who's out there talking to you and wants to talk to you. So we are going to go now to Marlene from Los Angeles in California. Marlene, how are you? Good. How are you? I'm doing very well. How can I help you tonight? Okay. So I'm calling a career work related uh, question. Uh, right now I'm working at a temp job and uh, there's a project that has like a rolling deadline, if you will. And okay. um, it seems like it, it might end next week for me, but we're still not sure. They've hired a few people. They've laid off a few based on the time frame of when they were hired. So that's their excuse or whatever, you know, their reasoning for laying people off. So I'm um, wondering if you see a layoff um, as far as that work. And then I also do another. I have a side job as well that I'd like to look into. Okay. Possible. Yeah. Um, you know, this is interesting because so frequently I get feelings in my body when something's happening. And when you were talking about that layoff and how people are losing their jobs now and you think it might end next week and all that, right away my jaw got really, really tense. Um, are, are you um, clenching your jaw and yeah, wanting to... Yeah, okay. um, today oh, it happens so to be like a, a, a day that's just been, yeah, I don't know, energetically uh, sort of hard. Yeah. You know where it's and coming from. Okay. Okay. So good. That that does tell not good for you, but good for me because it tells me I am connected to you because that jaw got really tense in there. And I just, and I, <laughs> it just made me, um, I don't know if you're watching, but I'm like cringing here. Um, it's, um, you know, it's all in some ways I want to call this situation. What's going on there kind of toxic because there's too, yeah, there's too much uncertainty. There's, you, People aren't saying, people in power who should be saying things are not being transparent. They're not being open. They're not telling people anything. And I don't really want to say this, but I feel like they're doing it on purpose. And I feel like oh, they wow. just, yeah, I know that seems really harsh. I know. I hope I'm wrong. Um, but it seems very harsh to me. It feels like um, they're doing it on purpose. And I think the reason is, from what I'm feeling, is they just don't want to have to deal with the fallout of letting people know what's going to happen. And it's really kind of, what do I want to call this? It's like they're just ignoring the problem. And I feel there, there is a problem, but it's coming from them. Now, I, I'm sorry, I kind of digressed off from a little bit from what you're looking for, um, just because that's what it's <laughs> no, feeling. No, that's the correct environment. Yes, that's what I'm experiencing every day. So okay. hence, hence the clenched jaw right there, you know. Yeah, it, it just doesn't feel nice. I, I just It makes my whole body feel icky. Um, it really does. Um, you know, I have to say, I, 
you do this with, with what you want here. Um, I have to say, it feels like you will be leaving the position somewhat soon, okay? But with that, I have to say, it also feels so much better. <laughs> it just does. It feels so much better. It's kind of like a relief. Um, and, and I don't think next week, though. It feels like it's later than that, okay? So just kind of keep it in the back of your mind that um, there are going to be some shifts. I don't know if you're going to make the choice or they're going to make the choice, but either way, um, it, yeah. it is coming, you know, oh, okay. and, and, and that's okay because I have to say, okay, good. I've got lots of time. Um, I have to say, I have lots of time to talk to you and there is, you have time and you're going to feel better. You're, you're actually going to feel like this weight has lifted off of you. Um, there is also, now this is an interesting thing that I'm feeling because I'm feeling a connection to another job. And you said you had another job as well, a side job. Uh, yes, I do, and his name's Garrett, my dispatcher. Uh, I, I do deliveries, and he happens to be, like, all this week I happen to be working with him, and the relationship between him and I is, like, really easy because I think he's a trustworthy person. I don't see this person, but uh, we I work for his company. Like, not necessarily his, his but he's yeah. the person that I look to for. Okay, credit. good. Because I'm feeling something else, and it may very well be this, and it feels right to me, because there's this sensation of you already being connected to somebody who's going to lead you to something else. That there is another path coming to provide even more, I don't know, I guess income would be the solution, right? Um, providing more. And I can see the, um, either he knows somebody or... There's something here where he's going to help you in a different direction as well. I don't feel you leaving that position, that side kind of job. I don't feel that, but I feel something added on to it that actually feels quite nice. So there is a connection here. Um, lots of times when I'm doing a reading, I, I do hand motions, <laughs> which tells me something. And what I'm seeing is you going off straight, and then all of a sudden you're turning uh, to the right, so to speak. And you're going to move into a different direction as well. There's, boy, there's all sorts of opportunities for you. You have quite a few skills, don't you? Yeah. I mean, I've had to do a lot of things to, to make ends meet. So Yeah. Um, yeah. And, you know, it's kind of cool here because I'm seeing all these different places you've been, um, some that you really hated, and some that were adequate <laughs> and some that were good. And some that were beneath you, but you did such a good job with them. You, you know, you did your best. You always do your best. You're responsible, reliable, all of those Very. things. And you always do your best. And what has happened because of all these experiences you've had is you have built up this foundation of skills that has made you more and more and more employable and is leading you to different places and more opportunities, even more opportunities. And I do like this. I'm actually getting kind of excited about this because I feel like you've got <laughs> something coming that's really exciting and cool. And in, within the next year, and I even feel that's too far away, so it will be within the year, um, there's so many other things coming for you. Oh, how interesting. Have you contemplated running your own business yourself? Oh, yeah, I have. I mean, I, you know, I just have to create it and plan it out and all that. But hopefully, like, no, not hopefully. I, I will eventually. That will, you know, I'll have enough funds to do that because that's going to be where I want to stay, you know, for going forward. But I want to do nonprofits. So, yeah, mm -hmm. that's where my skills are best suited as far as, like, uh, just empathy, compassion, all that. You know, I'm just a very you know, oh, yes. person, I guess. Yeah. Because you, you always do the right thing, you know, that goes yeah. along with your responsibility and the reliability and all of that. It's just sometimes it's hard to get enough money to live and do something else on the side, um, you know, to create that business you want to have. But I do want to say I am feeling that happening. I'm also feeling you starting the action steps now. Have you started making lists and ideas and plans yes, in your head? Yes, I have. I and have. Do, you have them, do you have them on paper yet? Well, I'm starting to do brainstorming or, and uh, playing with the idea of automatic writing because I feel that it comes through that way, you know. So things that I wouldn't have known before, they just are in my subconscious is where it's all, it all is. 
and I will find out through, through writing. Yeah. Okay. That's awesome. I love automatic writing. I do that myself. And that's actually what changed my whole life. And so you keep doing oh, that. Wow. That is a definite. Keep doing that because I see you writing this out. I see you writing a plan out. I see you writing your ideas out and having it written in the physical form sets it in motion even more than just in our heads and having that there because I'm seeing you starting this now. OK, I'm not seeing you waiting. And that's not to say you're going to go out there and take a loan out and do whatever you have to do. You're not going to do that. You yeah. just do one small step at a time because you're responsible. You're not about to you know, do that anyway. Um, but you're going to do one small step at a time <laughs> and it's going to be getting it in line. So it's ready to go. And I see this happening and you will do it. You are not going to not to do it. You will do it. And it's oh, going wow. to be sooner than you think. So you need to start really getting it in your head where you want to go, what you want to do, how it's going to work. You know, you need to start really going, OK, when I do this, this is where I want to be. This is how, how I'm going to find whatever I need to find. This is how I'm going to make these connections. And you're going to start making more connections now. You're going to start building them up now so you have them. OK. So let's see what else I got only like 90 se seconds left to talk to you. So oh, okay. <laughs> I hope I answered your questions. Yes. Uh, uh, did you say that I was going to be laid off or, or not? Well, or, yeah, I, I, you, you said ne not next week or something? It doesn't feel like next week. It feels like after that. Oh, okay. okay. So, All right. So you've got time. You've got some time. It's not a lot of time, but you've got some time. Okay. Um, but in the meantime, you just keep doing what you got to do to keep yourself healthy because that's a stressful environment and you do not need that. Um, so you you just do what you've got to do to keep yourself healthy. So Marlene, it was so nice talking to you and I hope to talk to you again to hear about your nonprofit when it gets going in the next year or two. Oh yes, of course. I look forward to it. I can't I wait to watch the replay so I can see oh, your hands, your movement oh, yeah. of hands. That, that's yeah, very telling, I'm sure. All the time. Okay, it was nice talking to you. I'll talk to you again okay. sometime. Bye bye. You too. Bye. Thank you. Okay, bye. You're welcome. And that was Marlene from California. So this week, when you are making your decisions, you want to live your life, choose the nine out of ten or the ten out of ten or higher. Do not do something you don't want to do. Say no. Just say no. Just say no. Move on. And if and make sure you look at the end result too, okay? This was Creating an Inspired Life, and I'm Colleen Vanderzyden. You can find me at Facebook Colleen Vanderzyden, Medium and Self Empowerment Coach, and on my website, psychicmediumcolleen.com. Thanks for watching and listening, and I will talk to you next week. Goodbye.